Hi, I'm Richard at Data Edo. Today I'm going to give you a demonstration of the Data Edo web catalog, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about what a data catalog is and why it's important. A data catalog can be described as a collection or an inventory of information about the data assets owned by a company or an institution. The purpose there is to enable those people who use data, whether that's business users, decision makers, reporting analysts, uh, technical developers, anybody who relies on data, it enables them to easily find and understand those data sources so they can be confident as they use that data to do their jobs that they are providing correct and, and valuable information. The benefits of the catalog are many and varied. Today we're going to talk about two. The first one is that the data catalog is a comprehensive representation of all of the data assets. In other words, those people who are searching can be confident that their search included all of the assets. They don't have to worry that there are other assets that they missed. They don't have to think that there are other people or other places they have to look to get additional information. They can be confident that their search was comprehensive. The other benefit is that the information returned by their searches is complete. This refers to the depth of information or knowledge that they're getting out of the catalog. They can be confident in a well-documented data catalog that all of the information they find there is accurate, is complete, so that they can trust it. They don't have to worry that there is other information or other nuance to the information that they need to consider. So now that we know what a data catalog is, the obvious question is why do we need one? The short answer is because tribal knowledge isn't good enough. If you ask two different people the same question, you're going to get at least two different answers. And if you ask the same person the same question at different times, you're probably going to get different answers. Knowledge that's held in the minds of people is subject to misinterpretation. So some of the examples of why this is a problem are illustrated here. The first one is this misinterpretation problem. People who don't understand the data can misreport it, they can misuse it, and bad decisions are the result. The second example here is the example of a worker who is searching for an understanding of the data so that they can do their job. It's been estimated that the average worker wastes between 30 and 35 percent of their time searching for this understanding and often they have to search many different sources. So they can't find the information and they also ask other people. They probably go to an expert who they know and ask that question. And the expert then also has to spend time answering the question. Potentially, they have to spend time searching for the answer themselves and then conveying the answer to the person who asked in the first place. So there's a lot of wasted time there. Down here, we see the time wasted uh, with new employees being onboarded. If they're reliant on a single expert to be responsible for that transfer of information to the new employees, that onboarding process, then we lose time just based on that person's availability. We also have that problem of timing. The same person can think they're conveying the same inf information to the new employees at different times, but simply because of the way they phrase it or the way it's presented, it can be interpreted different ways. And so the new employees understand the data differently and that leads to these problems in the other spaces. Finally, that expert. He is an employee and he may leave the company at some point. And when he does, all of the knowledge that is in his mind goes with him unless there's been a transfer of knowledge and that usually doesn't happen. And so it takes a considerable amount of time to recover that information, that understanding, so that the company can get back to where it was before the, that person left. All of these situations lead to this need for having a data catalog where all of the information is stored, it's standardized, and it's permanent there. If things change over time, the data catalog can be updated to re reflect those changes, but it's still standardized and everybody in the company can rely on the same understanding and use the data in the, sa in the same way and use it correctly. When you have a data catalog, all of the workers in the company become more efficient and all of their products become more trustworthy. With that background about the data catalog and what it is, let's move into Data Edo's web catalog. Data Edo's goal is to make it easy to create, maintain, and access the data catalog, and the web catalog is a big portion of that. So let's come in here with the assumption that we have a user who is looking for information about a particular subject, um, in this case, name, 
So they type in name and they get this small list of results here. It turns out what they're looking for is not in that list, so they go ahead and click on advanced search. We have a very large list of results from that search, and so we're going to narrow that down. First of all, we know that we're interested in a column. Second, we know that the data source we're interested in is the AdventureWorks database. So we can reduce that. And as you can see, we now have 87 results. That is much more manageable than 2,500, but it's still too many to look through. So we're going to narrow this down further. We know that in here there are names of things that have nothing to do with people. We want to get rid of those. So we're going to say we want places where name is personal data. Now we're down to 43. And we want to know that the data there is sensitive. We want to know that it's, it's, it's an actual name. It would be sensitive personal information. We're now down to 31 results. With this, with this list, we can start scanning to see what it is we're looking for. So we're looking here at job candidate name, job candidate username, and right here, person first name. That is, a, that is the one we're looking for. And here's last name right there. So we can click on either one of those, and it takes us over to the person table, and we have information about the last name of the person but we don't know what kind of person this is. Is it only customers? Is it only employees? Is it both? Is it other kind of people? We don't know. Let's click on person right there, and we have a description. People involved with AdventureWorks, employees, customer contacts, and vendor contacts. It includes everybody, and that may or may not be what the person is looking for. Let's assume that it is not, and they want to be able to get only one type of this of these people. So let's go back to columns and explore this table. Here is a list of the columns with their definitions and right here we have person type and it is defined as primary type of the person. Store contact, individual, salesperson, employee, vendor contact, general contact. Turns out what we're looking for is customers. So we're looking for rows in this table where the person type has that IN value, individual customer. So that gives the person looking for this information not only the knowledge of where they can get the names of the, per of the people, first name, middle name, last name, suffix, they can also limit that to the exact type of person they're interested in. So that allows them to quickly get the information they need and understand what it means when they get there. For the next example, let's assume that someone is looking for information about a particular term that they're unfamiliar with. So the best place for that is to go to the Business Glossary. And in the Business Glossary, we have the ability to either browse through terms by category or, or grouping, or we can search. Let's just start right here. And the, the term that we're looking for is going to be vendor credit rating. We'll just type in here credit. And the search comes up right there, vendor credit rating. We click on that, and we see here the description, a score that describes a vendor's delivery performance, etc. And it gives the person who is looking for this information all of the uh, understanding they need right there. They know what it, what it means, and they know what are the possible values that could be found in that, in that description. So it, it gives them the information they need. Another example is if someone, maybe they wanted to browse for the information. So maybe they're looking for, for product reviews. We can come down here to product, just click into there. Right there we have a customer product review. We click on that and we have the description and we have some relationships right here. Obviously it's associated with a product. The review is about the product, but it's also is associated with the customer. The customer actually created the product review, so there is a relationship there too. If we come up to customer, we can see here it is right there. It is used by customer product review. So it gives us those relationships between terms that help us understand better the context of the term and how it is best used. Now we want to go and find out more information about this customer and where the data actually comes from. We scroll down here to the linked data assets, and from what we learned before, we know that customers are included in this person table. So let's go there, let's follow that link. 
And here we are back to the person table. And you remember this one was the people, advent, uh, people involved here, employees, customer contacts, and so on. We can go to the columns and learn more about what information we have available for these, uh, these people records. Um, so we already talked about you know the, the person type. We talked about the names a little bit. Other things here to, to notice are all of these columns that we have extending out to the right. Um, over here first we have you know we have this column that describes whether or not this information is active and, and current in the database. And this tells us that each row is active. So that means that we can trust that the data in there is being used, it's being maintained, and so on. Then we have some columns here that are for the technical people, whether or not the column can allow null values, if there are any constraints, uh, what the default values are, relationship here to another table, and so on. Here we get into who the expert is about this, this information. So if we're looking for person type, we can see that Jonathan is the expert, and so if we have questions about that, we know he is the person we should go and, and ask about. Um, same thing for name styled. Again, it's Jonathan. We go over there, and we have the descriptions that tells us. We already looked at this description for person type. Here is a description for name style. This tells us that the values in there are either ones or, or zeros, and it tells us the zero means that it's a western style name with the first name first and one is it's an eastern style name with the last name first so it helps us understand how to use the data once we get there and, and other columns as well other information we have across here um, we know that we have classified uh, these name columns as as sensitive or personal or whatever confidential according to these different categories the CCPA tells us by personal data, this is personal information, and, and so on. The, the uh, category and the actual classification is shown to us. And then over here at the end, we have some, a couple of columns that show stats about the profiling of the data. The profiling is done in the, data, in the desktop app, but it can be saved and, and shown here at a very high level. There's no data shown. It's just telling us that of all of the values in this field, they are 100% unique. And it gives us a, a view that shows the distribution. Since they're unique, obviously it's equal all the way across. And here we see for person type, they're 100% not empty, but there's only a couple of values because we only had two possibilities or three possibilities. Same thing for name style. And we work our way down. We can learn more and more about these and so on. So we get more and more information here as we delve deeper into the column um, and the table person and what it actually means. The next thing to know here is that Data Edo Web Catalog has the ability for users to interact with the data and with each other about the quality and content of the data catalog. We go over here and click on the community button and it opens up a panel where we can see comments made over time about this data and users have the ability to make comments or to add ratings in the form of stars. Here we see that John Doe made two comments um, about a year ago and he, it appears he tested the data and didn't like what he saw. He was concerned about the quality of the data. He made a comment to that effect. This is a flag that allows a data steward now to go in and check the data for the quality and make sure that it's good, or if it's not good, to fix it and make it, make it better. And then the data steward has the ability to reply back to John Doe with the results of that action that he took. I have just a couple more areas that I'd like to talk about. So I'm going to close the community feature there, and I'm going to pop over to subject areas. Subject areas provides a way for non-technical users who don't know the technical data sources. They can still get in and find out the information they need as it pertains to other data. So here we have an employee's subject area, 
And within that, we can see that there are a, a selection of tables that all apply to that. The value of this is those people who are working in HR, for example, they don't need to search for the tables that pertain to employees. They're all shown right here in one place. So it makes it easier for them to access the information they need. Another value of the subject areas is that we have the ability to create these diagrams of how the tables in that subject area relate to each other. These lines show relationships between the tables. So technical people can use this to understand how to make joins in their, in their development and you may make the proper use of the data sources. The non-technical people can look at this and see employees are related to all these various topics. We have topics about their full-time pay, their business unit, their date of employment, their age group, and so on. And they can very quickly see what information we have and how it's related to each other. We have two views of this. The diagram is created automatically in the web catalog and the ERD, that stands for Entity Relationship Diagram. It's a technical term, but it shows basically the same thing, but these are created manually by users in the data, in the Data Edo desktop app, where they can create these slightly different if there's a need. For example, if there was a table in another area that they wanted to include here for reference, they could add it here, even though it's not technically part of the subject area, it can be included in that view. So it allows us the ability to get in and see relationships among the different tables. The next thing to look at here is we can see the lineage, how the data moves through the data sources and into reports. Um, so that brings us to the last one I want to talk about, which is the reports catalog. We can go by report type. We can make a list of all of the reports that exist in this landscape. And for each one of those, we can get various other parts of information about it. We can see a live view into the report if we sign in. And the one I want to show here is this lineage. We can see an expanded lineage that shows from this report it, that data came from this data set which comes from these tables in this particular warehouse and those are traceable back to two other locations. And we, so we get this view of where the data came from for this report. We can also work the other direction and say from any of these tables where is that data used? So for example, let's look at that customers table and we can see from customers, the data goes downstream into all of these places and ends up in five different reports. It allows an understanding where the data came from and an understanding of the impact if something changes upstream, what is going to be affected downstream. So it allows both technical and business users to understand how the data moves and what its relationship is to each other. In conclusion, I'd just like to say that the Data Edo Web Catalog's goal here is to provide access to a well-formed data catalog that you all will create based on your data needs and the way you use your data from the sources all the way through to reports. It provides an understanding for the business users to be able to get in and understand the data, whether it's through the glossary or the subject areas, the report catalog, it allows them access into this very technical space without having to understand everything. The idea is that we want to make things easy for everyone to get to the data and be able to have a solid foundation and understanding of, of that data.